Hey you guys, this is Cody Sorgenfry here. I built another new tool in Cinema for you guys to use. This one I built for myself just because I wanted to make those cool connected particles in Cinema without X particles. So I have here a cloner that has a bunch of little particles in it. And they're spread around with the random effector and they're also being animated with a random effector if I hit play here. Like um, this random effector here. Nope, this one. Set to uh, random mode turbulence. The animation, animation speed of 5 and a scale of 200. So we want to connect these guys based on a distance. So if the particles are within a distance, they connect. This is different than the, the normal MoGraph uh, tracer object in the sense that the MoGraph tracer object just connects them uh, here. Why don't we just do it? And you can see the difference. So we have this tracer object with our cloner in it, and it traces the path based on motion at default. Or you can say connect all objects, and it connects one object to another sequentially. It doesn't connect all of them, even though it says connect all objects, no matter what we do. So that's not what we want. It's not going to do. So I built this guy. It uses Expresso and some Python. And what you do is you give it your cloner. I have it disabled right now. You give it your cloner, and then you have to give it an empty spline object um, so that it can fill it with the connections. And it has a bunch of different modes that I'll walk you through. But first, let's go ahead and just see it work. So it connects them all based on this search distance of 53. And um, have some quite a few clones, and uh, it's connecting almost all of them to each other, so it's chugging along pretty slow. But if I decrease this number here, it'll go a little faster. Which is really cool, though. We have this functionality here. This will work with uh, thinking particles, too. You just got to uh, put the thinking particles in a matrix object. And then, and then it'll work with that too. So this is mode number one, and this is uh, one of the coolest effects we have here. Uh, the reason that I can I can pan my viewport here so easily, but then the playback is still kind of chunky, is that it's actually figuring out each frame, uh, which ones get closer and which ones get further apart, so that it can make and break those connections. Um, so it's, it's got to calculate that every frame. See, we see these two just popped apart. They're, they're further than 16 apart, but then when we restart it here, they start connected. So that's really cool. That's a cool functionality, but let's say we don't want that. We'd rather have playback speed. Forget about it. So let's put 50 in here. That should connect most of them. We have this build once option. So it just builds on a selected frame. And then it just lets it play the rest of the time. So you see it's not tracing my particles anymore. It just built it. Spits it out, basically. Let's it go. This is useful if you want to, you know, come in here. Maybe change the seed so that we can uh, play around with looks. Each time we want it to, to build again, you get some, get some different looks each time. So that's really cool. That's that, that mode. The last functionality I built into this is the subdivide option. And you may be thinking, why why in the world would I want my spline subdivided? That is because there's this really cool effect that I've seen on the internet where the all of our elements here are connected. And then the 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 splines in between them actually start to sag like they're made of string or something. And and it gets that, that cloth dynamics happening or the soft body on it. And for that to happen, the spline needs physical subdivisions. Um, some of you may know that a spline object actually has intermediate points, which is like an internal subdivision method. And that won't work. It doesn't work with dynamics. It needs, it needs real subdivisions. So... Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. I'm going to save my file just in case something bad happens. 
It won't though, don't worry about it. So we have subdivide, we told it give us two subdivisions. I switched to point mode because I wanna see our points of our spline when they happen. So now when it makes our, our spline, we get a point in the middle of each one, which is super cool. And then it also goes ahead and selects the the real points, like the the points that were taken from the cloner so that we can stick them and set them fixed in our dynamics to be like uh, stuck in, in air. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about as we go on. But um, so that's what it looks like with, with the subdivision set to two. We can subdivide as much as we want, but I'll show you what it looks like without subdivision when it happens. You just get clean, clean spines connecting them, which is really cool. Uh, if you just want the animation to happen, but let's go ahead and make a uh, let's make it let's make it sag. Um, I'm going to set the subdivisions to four and subdivide to on, so we get some nice subdividing happening. Here's our object. I'm going to go ahead and copy this spline object so it doesn't get erased when we jump back to frame zero. There we go. So this is our spline now. Uh, that's going to stay there permanently because the, the tool only changes the spline that you have set in the output object. So it's going to leave this alone. Now if we come to simulation. Oh boy. I think cloth. And then in the dresser we can set the fixed points. So that fixes the points that we have selected on our object. So those are being covered up with our cloner right now, but there they are. Let's see if that worked. I don't know if it did. Um, I'm going to disable my, my uh, network tool there. I don't want it making any more objects. Um, you know, maybe a cloth wasn't the way to go. I think it was though. I think this is how it works. Fix points, set. No. Bear with me, people. Oh, you know what? It's spline dynamics is what we want. That's right. Here it is. It's under the hair tags. Now we can set our points to fix. That makes sense because this is a spline. Here we go. Set. Okay, now we can see, let me zoom in here, we got these little points are, are on there. It's gonna work. So now we have a sag, it's really cool. Get some relaxing in there. And you know what, it's looking a little rigid. We need some internal subdivisions there. So we set this to uh, B-spline, intermediate points, uh, adaptive. And there we go. Now we get some nice smooth bending. Um, you know, I'm going to change that from adaptive to, to a natural eight. It's going to make it go faster. It doesn't need more than eight. And then in our tag, we can make it sag a little more by, uh, by doing some stuff to it, taking the rubber out of it. It's really going to make it saggy. Oh yeah. Some stiffness out of there. Oh, look at that. These things are like little strings. It's like a spider web. I love it. And then this is dynamic, so you can you can animate that and do whatever you want with it. It's like a little net. Super cool. Cool guys, so this is the tool. I'm giving it away for free. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh please like this video and share it with your friends.